Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Stein. I am the program manager for emergency rental assistance programs here at the state of Colorado. My team's joining me here. We've got Carly Myers and Haley Andriatis Vermeer. Um, they are both specialists on this program as well. Thanks for joining us. So this is the Colorado Emergency Rental Assistance Case Review and Administration Q&A. So please note that there are two separate RFAs that were launched in relation to this program. One is for case review and administration, that is this one today, and another is for housing stability services, and that is tomorrow at 10 a.m. So feel free to attend both, but just know that housing stability services questions will be answered tomorrow during that Q&A. All right. Well, um, questions, there will be plenty of time at the end uh, for questions, but please enter questions into the chat. They will be tracked and we will address them in order at the end of the presentation. So the Colorado Emergency Rental Assistance launch timeline is that the RFA has launched. It launched on October 1st and it will close on October 31st. So once that closes, then our review will begin. So determinations will be made by December 2nd. Once those are made, everyone will be notified as to the determination, whether agencies were selected or whether uh, they will be encouraged to apply next time around. Um, grant agreements will be sent to selected grantees for review and signature, any negotiations that need to happen, strategizing, anything like that will happen throughout that time period between December 2nd and December 16th. And then on the 1st, this is more just informational for those that are selected. Um, we will be making some portal updates to the portal that will be utilized for rental assistance application processing, any training for new grantees that maybe have not used that system or don't have experience administering a state-run rental assistance program. Um, and then any communications that need to happen uh, to Coloradans about this new program um, or, you know, differing funding for an existing program. Um, this program will run with a pre-application system. So folks that are looking to apply for rental assistance will be asked to complete a pre-application. Um, we will then select the number that we have the capacity to serve and those will come through and then be encouraged to complete a full application in that portal that we talked about. So the pre-application will happen uh, between the, it'll probably be January 20th to January 22nd. We'll collect those applications so that folks will have already applied by the time the program launches and the contracts are executed on February 3rd, which is that Monday. In terms of the grantee selection process, so we did outline what we will be looking for, what preferences are given, things like that, and all that criteria can be found on pages 8 through 10 of the RFA document. So if you have specific questions pertaining to your agency, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we will address those specific questions uh, at the end of the presentation. A little bit of background about the SARA program. So in terms of the funding source, so this, the money for this program comes from Proposition 123. So if you want to look into it, it's in the Colorado Revised Statutes 2932-101 is where it begins and then it goes from there. Um, please note that there are different funding allocations within Prop 123. So not all of that will be going towards emergency rental assistance. There are other uh, other programs that will be utilizing those funds as well. But the funding that is allocated to us here with Propos Proposition 123 is intended to provide emergency rental assistance and eviction prevention services to Coloradans in need. The annual amount will fluctuate, but it is expected to be between 15 and 30 million on an annual basis. In terms of expenditure plan, we are estimating that the number of households that we will be able to serve on an annual basis is about 3,000. These are approved applications. This does not include the number that are determined to be ineligible for whatever reason. Um, approximately the number of cases per month, 
comes out to about 250. So that would be split out between the selected grantees. Program design, for those of you that are familiar with existing state rental assistance programs, um, also known as ERAP, or there was a temporary rental assistance program as well that was known as TRAG. Those have some different uh, criteria. We have highlighted the changes that will be implemented with SARA. For example, currently the program accepts summons and demand cases. So folks that have received a 30-day demand um, or a 10-day demand or a summons but priority is being given to those summons cases. That will also stand with the SARA program. However, a set number of demand cases will also be selected each round. That number has not been determined yet, but will be done in partnership with the selected agencies. Other aspects remain the same. One big change that will be uh, put into place is the look back period. So look back refers to how recently a household that is reapplying for assistance last received assistance. Right now we look back 12 months prior. So a household cannot have received rental assistance from a local state or federal rental assistance source in the last 12 months. With Sarah that will be extended to 24 months. So cannot have received assistance in the last 24 months. However, there is no cap for assistance. Historically, emergency rental assistance programs have had an 18 month maximum throughout the lifetime of any rental assistance programs. That will no longer, that will not be in place for the SARA program. Um, this is due to the fact that no one can reapply for two years and we feel like so much can change during those two years that a cap is not necessary or fair. The only other change is that currently right now with the ERA program, the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, there is no prospective res, uh, assistance permitted. As things stand right now, the SARA program will permit two months of prospective assistance. So that is if someone comes in and says that they have three months of arrears, we look at those arrears, their current month, and then could provide two months of future rent. So that will that will likely fluctuate because it'll depend on the funding that we have available, but this is our plan as of right now. Tenant qualifications, there are some changes here as well for those of you that are familiar with our existing programs. Households must be at or below 60% AMI. Existing programs are at 80%, but this was a mandate that came down. Um, must have a valid lease in the state of Colorado, and the household has to have been served with either a demand for compliance or an eviction no notice. This includes an FED, a court summons, a sheriff's notice, anything like that, a stipulation, those kinds of things. Um, again, a set number of demands will be selected in our pre-application, um, but they cannot have received assistance from a local, state, or federal source in the last 24 months, and that applies to all situations. In terms of the applicant selection process, we talked briefly about the monthly pre-application. The pre-application will be available on the Division of Housing's Rental Assistance website. It is linked here, and I will also send out this presentation so you have that link. The random selection is administered by DOH. Uh, the number is selected based on the capacity of the grantees. So that capacity can and will fluctuate based on, you know, the difficulty of cases, um, you know, how quickly applicants who need to provide other documentation are getting back to the agencies, things like that. So that number will fluctuate. Um, those selected are then invited to complete a full application in our portal, which is Neighborly. So for any of you that are familiar with the Neighborly system, that's what we've historically been using for the emer emergency rental assistance programs here at the state. And then there will be a call center. So a DOH funded call center will hold a daily random selection for tenants with a court summons or more urgent documentation. That number will certainly fluctuate because it will be based on the immediate need. So those folks that are calling and being selected through the call center are those that are in most urgent need. They will have to have a court summons or more urgent documentation. No demand cases will be taken in through that call center. Those that are selected through that daily random selection will then again be invited to complete a full application in Neighborly and that is what will be reviewed by the different grantees. 
In terms of the tenant landlord application process, so the applicant applies online and then the landlord is also required to complete an application in neighborly. Documents that will be required, lease, ledger, photo ID, proof of income for landlord, lease or ledger and a W-9 dated within the last six months. So funds in this program are sent directly to the landlord, whether by electronic fund transfer, paper check, anything like that. And exceptions to pay the courts or the tenant directly can happen, but require DOH approval prior and all other attempts must have been exhausted before those options can be pursued. Expected review timeline. So we understand that this will fluctuate. It will depend on how complete the application is when it is received, the applicant landlord responsiveness, the date of time that the applicant initially applied. So it will work based on that. And also each grantee will have different ramp up or hiring times, administrative effectiveness differences there. So the goal is that applications are fully processed within four to six weeks of selection. That will hopefully work for the majority of the applications. We understand that there will be one-offs. Some will be worked very, very quickly and paid out in the next couple of days due to the completeness and others will not. But this is the goal in terms of timeline. In terms of the DOH point of contact, any questions can be routed through me. Again, I'm Maria Stein, the Emergency Rental Assistance Program Manager, and that is my email. I will send this out and you can contact me with any questions that you might have. And we are open for questions. I think that that's the most valuable part of these Q&As is just whatever questions you have after looking at the RFA documents. So I will open it up. Haley and Carly, did anything come in through the chat that we need to address first? Yes, we got one question from Evelyn. Um, are there any restrictions on staffing costs for the below applications as we have encountered with the SFOO application? Does the financial assistance to tenants get paid by the agency or directly by the state? Wonderful. And Evelyn, I think that you had sent me an email. And so I was looking into this. So in terms of the financial assistance being paid, so this is paid by the agency. This is not paid through the state. Uh, the state will provide funds and there will be, you know, the, the agency needs to be able to work with the state, whether we do things based on an advance um, waiver system or based on reimbursements. So that is an answer that we are waiting on the state controller for to determine whether this program will be allowed to provide advances or not. Um, I'm sure that that will be relevant to a lot of the agencies that are here on this call. So we will be sure to send that information all out to all that are interested as soon as we receive it. And then I am not familiar with the SFOO application. Um, so I'm not sure, but I could maybe follow up with you via email and we can parse that out separately. Maria, our next question is a simple one. Um, they just asked, are these two RFPs what was originally being called the Colorado Renter Stabilization Program or CRISP in previous conversations? Yes, it is. So unfortunately, <laughs> our wonderful CRISP acronym was already being utilized by another state agency. And so we had to come up with an alternative, which is now being known as SARA. Maria, the next question is, are administrative funds awarded based on a fixed contract amount, percentage of dollars dispersed, or per case? So the project delivery, as we call it, um, or the what each agency is paid per case is done on a per case basis. So as each case is uh, permitted a fee of $500, so each agency when they complete review of the case and that case is paid out, they are able to bill $500 per case that they work. Maria, the next question is from Audrey. 
Um, and Audrey asked, can you share evaluation of TRAG or ERAP and update us on how many residents access help by county or region? I certainly can. That's something that I would have to send to you because it depends on what region uh, you would like to see. But I can tell you that at last count, as of the beginning of this year, I believe in April, the ERA program had helped approximately 45,000 households throughout its lifetime. And the TRAG program, which was a short-term state-funded program, assisted um, 4,000 households. Maria, the next question is, are there any restrictions on staffing costs for the below applications? Evelyn, I'm not sure what you mean by restrictions on staffing costs, so I will follow up with you via email so that I can make sure to get you the answer that you need. And then Will asked, um, would you mind giving us a rundown of how scoring will work for the two applications, so for both RFAs? Well, if what you mean is grantee scoring, so we will be looking at the template that was included in the RFA and looking at you know, how how the agencies meet those different needs. So depending on, you know, for example, the case review and administration, it's got, um, you know, whether they're, whether the agency has experience administering the rental assistance program through the state, whether they have the staffing capacity with which to handle what will likely be coming our way in terms of rental assistance need, whether they are able to serve the entire state or at least partner or serve rural communities. Um, so it will be, there will be a variety of different things that are listed there in the RFA that will be taken into account when scoring. And that information will be gathered based on the narrative that the, each agency submits to DOH. Does that answer your question? Wonderful. Any other questions that have not been asked, feel free to come off mute and ask your questions um, or to put them in the chat, whatever works best. Lindy, go ahead. So just a quick clarifying question. Sorry, I've kind of been a little distracted through the presentation, so I apologize if you've already covered it the requirement for statewide or partnership does that there will be someone each in each of the rural areas or the other parts of the state because i think that was an issue for the the trag for our side of the state so i the the way that the scoring comes into play with this so we there is preference given to agencies that can serve the entire state However, we understand that sometimes rural communities understand their needs best. And so rural agencies or agencies that can serve certain rural communities are more than welcome to apply. And we will absolutely take into account whether those, those areas need more targeted service or have maybe been underserved by these types of programs in the past when reviewing and scoring these applications. Thank you. Maria, we had one more question come in. Um, mm -hmm. Audrey asked, how will the lottery work within local communities? And is the lottery statewide? And then agencies will be assigned to longer term cases? So the random selection will be available on our website on a monthly basis. So every month, the random selection will be run via the state. Everyone in the state who needs rental assistance is welcome to apply. They have to meet the criteria. So we do clean the data before we select and run the random selection. So that will eliminate folks that have received assistance in the last 24 months. Um, I believe that's actually the only criteria that we would really be eliminating for in that run. Um, the other way that folks can access is again through that uh, call center that we will have available. They will be running 
a daily random selection. So the way to enter that is to will be to contact that care center um, that will be available for folks. So once that call center has been determined and established, we will let everyone in the state know um, via the same DOH updates newsletter so that all agencies, whether you're participating in this program or not, will be able to access that service. Again, the only difference between the two random selections that will be run is that the state will be selecting a set number of demands, whereas the call center will only be selecting those with court summons or more advanced eviction situations. Maria, Evelyn provided a clarifying question of um, the general question for her is, can we pay staff through this? So uh, yes, yes, um, but the way that you're receiving the funds is via project delivery. So each agency gets paid again, $500 per case that they work through completion. That money will very likely be used by the agencies to pay relevant staff, et cetera. But you are not billing for staff time, so to speak, you're billing per case. Any other questions? We have plenty of time, so don't be shy. <laughs> okay, well, if anything else comes up, I will send out this presentation. Um, we will make sure to answer any questions. Uh, there are some folks, Evelyn, you are one of them, who I will email after this and we can sort out whatever questions you might have please feel free to email me in the meantime if anything comes up and any other questions arise whether it be about the rfa process or the program in general existing programs etc thank you all very much <laughs>